Right, hello and welcome to the lab. Because there's more than one these days. Anyway, let's have a look at today's special guest, which is so huge it's taking up the entire view of the camera. Now, what the bugger is that? Well, you already know because you've already read the title of the video. Unless you didn't, then you don't. But you can probably see up there, so you will. Anyway. I'm going to tell you a little story before I reveal today's special guest. We, me and the pink fluffy monk, went down to the market at uh, Chesley Street and came across a box. It was raining, everything was soaked to say the least. And we came across <coughs> a little box which was full of these cases. These actually number 1 to 24 in the entire collection, so there's a lot, and the box was crammed. It had these, it had projection equipment, uh, oh, slide makers, slide cutters, and we had a look inside them. And inside the boxes, <coughs> and I'm out. I found these. Loads of audio tapes, real to real audio tapes. I said to the lady, I said, well, that could be handy if we do find one. There appears to be a big collection there, because there's some pre-recorded stuff as well, such as Trini Lopez and the camera's looking, looking onto his face there. Uh, stuff like that as well. She so says, and there's rejection uh, stuff in there, which I'm not going to put in this video, because that's not relevant to this video. That was in there, so I said to her, how much for the box? And she says, oh, £25. <laughs> she says, I'll throw in uh, the reel-to-reel -reel player as well. I thought, well, if there's a player there, uh, yeah, £25 isn't too bad. So I said, can I have a look at the machine? She says, well, it's, it's in the back of the van. Keeping dry and out the way because there's not many people here and we didn't want to unload at all. So, okay, I'll, go, I'll come and have a look. And we went round the back with her into the van expecting some really terrible condition machine. Which we thought, yeah, it'll work just to start to get it going. And she revealed this box. This very big and heavy box. <laughs> And my juices flowed rapidly. My geek juices went all over the place. And I thought, mmm. So. <laughs> we got the box out. And I'm just going to... <laughs> and... <sighs> How's the view there? That's better. We opened it. Removing the catches on the side like this. <sighs> Open it slowly to reveal. Oh yeah, score. My excitement was difficult to hide as I went, hmm, yes, that might do the trick. What we have here is an Akai X100D reel-to-reel -reel player. Eventually we found out this thing actually dates from 1965. So at the time of recording, this is getting on for nearly 50 years old. So £25 with loads of them and the projection stuff. So yeah, okay, we'll have it. Even if it doesn't work, we might be able to get it going. So I bought it home and <clears throat> First problem, it didn't have a lead on, and these wires are, it had a lead on, didn't have a plug on, and these wires, if you can see, are identical, there's nothing to give away which is positive and which is negative, so I had to go inside there with my multimeter, track the cables and find out which is the positive and which is negative, luckily the positive went straight through a fuse and straight to the transformer and the negative came back through the circuit so it's easy to find out. I put a plug on and put power onto it. And yes, it started moving. <laughs> Which I can show you now. Actually, 
Just put the plug in. And switch it on. And as you can see, over here, it's got power. And I don't know why you can see that. We found out as you press play, that head moves, fast forward, head moves fast. Rewind, that one moves fast. And down here, you can see the capstan head is moving. Oh yes, it's so good. And the analog lights, analog gauges, they're lit. I don't know at this point whether they actually worked, but we knew they had power. So the next thing to do was uh, to clean the heads. This cap, most of these are got in there with a cloth with some methylate spirits, rubbed them clean and voila, nice. This capstan was actually so corroded, there was like rust all over it, or some sort of deposit. Uh, normal cleaning methods just could not remove it. Uh, we had to actually use a little bit of uh, sandpaper, very fine sandpaper to get it off and it appears to have done the trick. So, next thing, let's have a tour of this. Let's start on the side. We'll go through these features after, but we'll start on the side. Okay. <clears throat> right. On the left hand side, which face front, you have outputs. You have a 5 DIN output, that one, two, three, four, five 5 DIN output, so I'm assuming to a hi-fi, can't be much else, there's no, no remote controls or anything for this that I'm aware of, uh, no it wouldn't work at all, mechanical, you've got line outputs and line inputs for left and right, I actually use these connect to connect it to my sound system, on the back! There we go. We have a big fan which does work. I don't know. It's trying to prove me wrong. What you doing? Oh, gotta put power in there. Right. There we go. Got a fan which does work. Does that go faster if you fast forward? Let's have a look. I think that might be. I oh know, it runs all the time. Okay, as long as the cap stands running, that's running. Cool. Yeah, so that runs as long as there's power. Good. Below that, we have a 240, uh, I believe the other one is on top. Ooh, nice little breeze. 120 selector, uh, fuse, and a. Just below there is a Hertz cycle selector. Select Excuse me, which is to selected to 50 hertz because you're here in the UK. I'm slacking this off a little bit. There we go. Down there we have the Akai X100D plate with the serial number, which you can't see on the camera, but it is 820. No, no, sorry, 8000. No, come here. H2186. So there we go. Now there is a foot that's fallen off and a foot cover that's fallen off. I have both. The foot, uh, I took these off to get in the back and the foot won't go on. It seems to have threaded itself so I'm going to have to sort that out. And this cover from, uh, oh it's on the side. That needs putting back on. So I should sort them out. On the other side, we zoomed out. On the other side, not much, just hinges for the case. And on the bottom, we can see it's all lit up from the gauges. And let's see why there's an electronics inside. Nice. Right, on the front, what do we have? <laughs> Sorry if I'm in this song because that's what I've been listening to. Anyway, we have two heads. We have the supply head 
and the take up head. These are little rubber things. I'm just going to shut the motor up. These are little rubber things that go on top of the reel. I'll show you how to thread it in a minute to hold it in. And it even came with them, which is very handy. Uh, tape speed selector, low and high. This has actually got four speeds. I'll show you how the other bits selected in a moment. Below that, I'm just following it as the tape would follow. Here, you've got your tape cleaner, a little foam pad on the side, which I had to clean. This head guides it into the main heads there. This actually came off and caused me some other problems. Uh, when I put this back on, I reassembled it wrong and made the tapes go extremely tight to the point where one snapped, which was the only pre recorded one. This one. So that's a bit of a pain, uh, although we've tied the bits of tape together, but we're going to have to get another copy. That's a shame because that's a, at the moment a 48 year old album. Damn shame, but there we go. Right, the main heads are in here. Uh, there's a read, write and a bias head, I think. Not sure, but they're in there. And you just take this off to clean them. I will do a separate video on cleaning, so we'll get to see in there then. This is the capstan holder. Uh, this little thing here comes off and goes on here for storage. This is the main capstan and with that removed you get to uh, one speed, put it on and it plays the tape at another speed. This is the pinch roller. Uh, another selector for the Hertz. I have no reason why, no knowledge as to why they have two but fortunately I do have the manual which I'll have a look at in a second okay as we go past that this is the AS lever and what you do the tape passes through here and under here so that when you've rewound or when this finishes and comes through the tape's holding this up tape passes underneath tape leaves that drops the thing shuts off quickly demonstrate that actually. So if I put that <coughs> up, select the automatic, press play, you can hear it going. If this get if the tape comes past, this drops, machine shuts off. Completely shuts off. Completely powers down. So there you go. It took me a while to work out what that is, not having used one of these before. And there you have the take up spool. Beneath that, we have a play and we have two selectors. This one selects play, and if you press this button, record, you have to press this button down to select record. It's a safety feature, so you don't accidentally record all the stuff. Uh, side of that, we've got the fast forward and rewind selector. This is a stop thing for for example, if you're editing with the record on, give it some power, uh, switch that off. Normally, when you stop, it slows down, gently. Uh, with this, push it up, it stops it straight away, holds it, and then you can just to continue recording, which is great. Right, beneath that, you can see there, is the automatic selector. Selects whether this is in use. Uh, headphones, power on and off. Two analog uh, voltmeters, you might call them. Measuring the, you'll see them working once we've got tape going. Uh, on the left here, can you see? Yes, you can see that. We've got equalization. Uh, this controls the width of the track. Of the tape. I believe I'm not sure. I'll be right back. I'm gonna find out in the manual. Okay, I've read a read of the manual and I'm still not sure exactly what that does. But it's to do with uh, tape speed, but it doesn't seem to affect anything when you're playing. Uh, but that, which I missed out, is this one, which is the stereo selector. And I keep it in middle for stereo, but you can select mono. Moves the see it twitching there. It moves the heads around. 
to find where it's recorded. So you either go in the stereo or mono at the front or mono at the back. Something like that, I'm not exactly sure. So please don't beat on me. Left hand side, we have the tape counter. Everything's very well built and solid and you know. And two microphone inputs. So we'll have a quick look at the manual because that's interesting in itself. And then we'll, uh, I'll show you how to thread this thing. And then we'll take it down stairs and we'll see it playing. Okay, let's have a look at the manual. <laughs> Which is down here. Right. These are about eight pound on their own on eBay. So we have model X 100D operator's manual. Crossfield custom deck. And this being an older type manual, it actually gives you all the details. So you've got the specifications, oh, wait, and loads and loads of different technical stuff, which is great. Precautions, editing, selection tape speed, voltage. I'm just going to spin this forward a bit because this is the interesting bit. This is where it gets really geeky because you have two fold out bits. You have the connecting diagram, shows you different ways to connect this to different solutions. Hang on, quick cup of tea. Mm -hmm. Right, and something you really don't get these days. Oh, we've got the interwebs. Electrical schematics for the entire machine. Isn't that great? And for a machine that, at the time of recording, is 47 years old, immaculate condition. Somebody really took care of this because I had to do very little cleaning, apart from the heads. The machine itself needed very little attention. Just general dirt and dust, nothing major, just a quick wipe over. Now, let's see for many people, they're never going to never have used one of these. I never used one before I got this one. I've always wanted one, but a lot of them are quite expensive and you're taking a risk. But anyway, I'm going to show you how to wire, how to put one of the tips on one of these. I'm just going to be right back because my take-up reel is downstairs. Okay, if you ever pick one of these up at a garbage or anything, before you can use it, you're going to need at least an empty reel. Like this one. No tape on that. Now that goes on the right hand side. Now you'll notice on the right hand side there, there are little spines on the head there. As you can see. Now when you're putting the tape on, doing you'll need to line up that with the holes in here. And if you've got these screws, try and put them in front because they can come in handy. But I've learned a better way later than putting the tapes of these screws, which can damage them. Now I put the rubber back on, that holds it nice and firmly in place. You take up uh, the uh, tape you want to play. Now, a lot of the tapes have what's called a leader, I think it's called a leader, and it's usually a piece of green tape. Now this one is the pre-recorded tape. I'm going to put this on because it serves you the best quality recording, but this one has lost its leader. I've lost my leader, take me to your leader. Anyway, so we take this off, put this on so the tape is feeding from the left hand side. It must feed from the left hand side or else <coughs> You'll be playing this in reverse because to play the second side, you swap these over and it plays it again. Hang on, uh, yes, goes onto there, put that on that side, and it plays the reverse side. So that's how that works. Now we put this rubber on and we've got to guide this through the system. Now it's important not to put pressure on this tape. I've learnt this the hard way with this very tape. Just have a quick sup of tea. Now, so 
if you want more tape as you're feeding, turn this head. Okay, now on this machine, it's going to be different on different other machines, but on this one, we first of all guide the tape past the cleaner and this guide thing. We then pass it through the heads themselves and feeding more tape through there, we pass it between the capstan and its pincher. If we want the auto select, we bring that up too. This is where it can get a bit fiddly, especially from an angle. Okay, right. And then turning this to feed more through. You can either bring them through the grooves, which is sometimes there, sometimes just there. That actually tends to damage them, so all I do is pull, and then my uh, lead was a bit long there, so I'm just going to very gently wind it back. And then all you do, switch on the machine, we want the automatic, so that's switched on, and we just press play. This then turns, takes up the head. And there it is, fed and set up. So, what we'll do now, we'll take it downstairs, hook it up to the main sound system, and we'll let you see how it sounds with a pre-recorded, uh, what's his name? Trini Lopez, we'll do a few seconds of Trini Lopez, just so you can get the, uh, just for demonstration purposes, to see what it sounds like. We'll be right back. Right, here we are downstairs, and I've got it switched on. Uh, automatic selected because that bars up so it automatically selects if the tape breaks, rewinds or anything happens and it is plugged in to my large sound system using two leads here which are as you can see those sort of jacks so all that's left to do is press play and enjoy let's push this load back a little bit right here we go You'll see, it's just leading in, so no sound yet, obviously, but... And now PJ's proudly presents... This Freddy doesn't have Bear. my subwoofer switched on. And you'll see just how clear the sound is on this thing. It is incredible sound quality. And the bass response, bass and treble response, are awesome. Here's the quick demo. I'm going to turn her up. Yeah, very nice bass response. So that works very nicely. So as you can see, it works wonderfully. And the bass and treble response are awesome. So, you need to get yourself one of these. There are many problems they can come with. You can have badly worn heads apparently. There is a little device here that connects this wheel to this to push it up. That can be badly corroded and fall to bits. These are things you've got to look out for if you're thinking of purchasing one of these. And just make sure that they are in general good condition and um, that's the sand they've been looped after and as you can see even with that having been sandpapered it's not affected the sound the sound is perfecto so good find for 25 pound uh, thank you very much any questions please ask thank you very 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 much <laughs>